How we doing, guys? Uh, it's flat band here. <laughs> I'm a little bent over. I'm trying to. I'm uh, going to be making a video on how to cut rubber for a buddy of mine, and uh, so most of the time you're not going to be able to see my ugly face, which is a good thing. But you're going to see me be cutting rubber and stuff like that. Anyway, get started. This is a uh, this is an Ingento 15 inch guillotine type cutter. And when you want to cut your rubber, I think if you're going to cut uh, rubber on a, a lot, like if you're going to do a lot of bands and stuff, this is the baby right here. This is your thing. Let's cut a piece of rubber. I'll show you what I mean. So you get a roll of rubber. This is gum rubber. Very popular rubber. And uh, I always keep an arrow. If you can see it, there's an arrow there pointing to the side that I cut from. Keep it just so you don't keep yourself from guessing. Get this out of the way. I got a lot of stuff on this, and usually not as crowded as this, and the you know the way it is right now. But I got a, lot, a couple of things to show you guys. So you mark this. So this tends to be a half inch cut. We we'll get this right on. Mark this. Right there. Right. And you get your rubber. Put that there. Prevent it from rolling. And you set this right up on the edge, right on your pencil marks or your pen marks, like that. Right. Get it lined up. And you press down on your ruler. Press down like that. And this blade goes up and down like that. Now what I do is I press, I push the blade in a little bit and then come down as I make the cut. So like it goes like this. Like that. Don't get your finger in the way. Be good night, man. You cut that sucker right off. Beautiful cut. Like butter. Clean as the board of hell. Anyway, that's a and this is this is especially good on thick rubber. It's good on all kinds of rubber, thin latex. I, I use it for everything, you know. But uh, this is this is especially good on very thick rubber. And the key to this, like you know, you'll see, you'll hear guys, and we all say it. Like uh, if you shoot uh, heavy lead, heavier steel shot, your rubber will last longer. That's true. Uh, it'll definitely last longer if you uh, use heavier stuff. Longer bands, slower shooting bands will last longer. But the number one thing, number one thing sharp equipment if you keep this up you keep this razor sharp whatever you use the sharp as you can possibly be it's going to prevent them little pits on the end and that's where your wear is going to start so the sharper your tool can be the better that's the gum rubber but let me show you a couple little tricks i do this is a self sharpening blade they call this this is a little bit softer than this so every time you come down every time you come down she's sharpening she's sharpening herself and after you do like a ton of bands, you can see a little metal metallic dust back here in the back where the fulcrum is, you know. And what I do every once in a while, I'll take an Arkansas stone and just shoot a little WD-40 on there. And just lightly. Press that down. And go up, you know. And uh, I don't have to. Oh, yeah, I got a paper towel like this. Then wipe this down. Again, watch your fingers on it. Keep this wiped. Keep this little light WD-40. Then go down. One, two. She's ready for the next cut. Keep this like this. I've, I've had these for, I've used one of these for over 30 years, cutting bands. First in school, free. <laughs> then in work, and then I finally bought one. But this is a Ingento 15-inch maple bed reciprocating guillotine type cutter. And you can use Blue Skeen, one of the famous, uh, one of the most famous slingshot shooters, and I've done this too when I was a kid. You can use scissors, but again, they got to be as sharp as you can possibly make them. And the key with scissors is if you come in like this, you come in and keep it slow, like keep it right into the throat like that. Keep it slow, and then push up on your next cut. Slow. Keep your blade right on there with scissors. It takes a lot of practice to get a good cut, and again, sharp, sharp as you possibly can make them. Another way. Razor blade, very carefully with a razor blade, for obvious reasons. You press your, press your, uh, your stock down, your rubber down, make your line, and then you would have to have something over here like a heavy book. I used to use like a heavy book on one side, and just lightly come across, right down again, be very careful. You can use, makes it a little bit better, this utility knife, again, extra super sharp, go around. And then, but the second most, and I think the second best way, I think this is definitely the first best way, but the second best way is this. And this is called a rotary cutter. This is 60 millimeter rotary cutter. I like a big rotary cutter. I don't like, I don't like the 12 millimeters, 20 millimeters. I like, the, I like the big, this is a 60. I think it's one of the biggest sizes you can make. Got a shield on it, and it should because it's razor sharp. And then don't get it. Don't even buy one without buying this. It's a self-sealing mat. 
there is uh, you could use like a very hard leather or something like that but I, I re definitely recommend this a self-sealing mat and what I do is I put it down and say I want to cut uh, let's see let's see what we got I got yeah I got latex in this is a tw this is I fa in fact I've been using a lot of this lately this is 20 thousands food grade latex been really liking this stuff last nice anyway get you stay there's my arrow from the last cut and I got the arrow right there put it down so see what kind of a cut we're gonna make. I don't know. Let's let's uh, let's take let's make a tapered cut on this one. Let's say we make a yeah we'll take a half inch. And you don't have to be worried. You know you don't have to be worried. Like there's guys that make jigs. You know they screw into their beds, and you can make a jig like a, a pivoting jig like this. Make a jig, boom cut it that way and you can do but I just do it by hand I do each set by hand individually if you're going to be off you're only going to be off a fraction of an inch and it's not going to make that much of a difference because it's been proven with us when we shoot our slingshots I mean I have seen guys literally shooting high speed bands where the cut was half inch near the pouch and it was worn out to the point where there was an eighth of an inch of a band I'm sure you guys have seen this where you're shooting one side is it and you're wondering how am I hitting the bullseye with half inch solid on one side and there's only an eighth left it's torn you still so so if you're worried about a little discrepancy like you know I mean a couple of thousands of an inch don't worry about it if you are worried about it then you go to laser cutting or water jet cutting or die cutting and then you can really get it exactly every time but for my for my purposes and uh, I have no problem less and I think the main reason for for um, for the bands wearing is you know the sharpness of the instrument but anyway here we got this one as a half I marked this half this way right and up in the front we'll go for an inch Boom, mark it, right? Put it down. Now what I do on uh, on a rotary cutter, get my ruler, right? Come down, match up the two edges, match up the two marks I made, get them right on there. Boom, right? I get a clamp. Let's get a spring clamp like this. I got a little lip on my desk here. Double check it. Lock as close to the edge as you can get. The same way with this. When you're cutting this, when you're cutting this with a guillotine, get your ruler and press down and keep that as close as you can to the edge. Watch your fingers and then come down. Because that pressure is going to hold it nice and tight so she don't roll on you. Same thing with this. This this end, this end is tight, this cut. Now I have this end. I hold this down. I get my rotary, take the sheath off the guard. And I like a back cut. You can go either way, but I like a back cut. So I come like this, as close to the blade I can. Press down like that. Perfect. Dead on. All right. Perfect tapered cut. <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect tapered cut. Take it up. Make my next cut. Same thing. And you can use the and, and you can use the rotary cutter. You can use the rotary cutter for thick rubber. Uh, I think I think this does a better job for thick rubber, like eighth of an inch. I, I, it's very rare that I use rubber up to eighth of an inch, but I've had a request for it. But I mean, uh, this can do it. This 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 will cut heavy stuff. You just gotta you gotta on your first shot, make it a good one. Clamp it up, press down, and come down heavy because you, you don't want to have anything left. You don't want to go over the second cut a second time. And the cleaner and the sharper it is, the better it's gonna last. You know. And once you cut your rubber, then you come over here, put this shield back on, get these things out of the way, put this over here like that, and we get a band we get a pouch like that and we get it and what I do is I have a jig and this is also about 30 years old and I've said it a million times that I'm going to get a new one but I never seem to make enough time to make a new one and all it is you can see it is a two pieces of uh, old decking with two V's cut out for my clamps and I take my rubber now on some situation, on some, on some, like on thin latex, what I'll do is I'll fold this. I'll fold this like this and leave it doubled. I'll fold it like that and leave it doubled like that and come along like this and tie it up doubled so it has all that extra insulation. See that? But sometimes like on the, like the gum, most of the time on the gum and stuff, I'll just use a single cup, a single uh, layer like this, come like this, cut through and get your wing. Alright? See, I'm trying to do it for the camera, so I'm a little bit uncoordinated. So, Alright, so there we go. We got it cut through. So then what you do, is you come over here, and clamp it up. Like that. 
All right, she's good. And you clamp this side like that. Oh, now you got some stretch in that. She's stretched a little bit. The reason for that, on this particular top pouch, it doesn't make a difference. You can tie it loose. You can even need this spring. But on most pouches, if you don't stretch it a little bit, that pouch is going to curl. You ever see that after you shoot them? If you don't tie, if you have like a, friend, a friend of yours, and if you hold it and just tie a square and not boom, 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 without stretching it, it's going to curl on you. That pouch is going to curl. You don't want that. It messes up the accuracy. Cut yourself a piece of string. Come that. And you come around so you can see. Come around. And what I like to use, and I've tried sinew, I've tried latex, I've tried rubber, I've tried wire even, I've tried leather. I use 100% cotton twine. It's got to say 100% cotton twine. And I wrap it around usually two or three times like that. Get the knot, and I do a quick overhand knot like this. You can use a constrictor knot too. Some guys use a constrictor knot. I like that. Over, right over left. Then take the other one, come like this, and make yourself a square knot. Fingers are all messed up. Make a square knot. Boom. After that, take a little nail polish. Don't use crazy glue. It's too expensive. Nail polish, 99 cents. You know, you get some strange looks when the guys look at the nail polish. But, uh, hey, what do we care? We shoot slingshots. I use the clear. Doesn't make a difference. But anyway, <laughs> this stuff works. And But don't, don't whatever you do, don't use nail polish on latex-free bands. It eats through it like acid. I found out that that hard way. Don't use any kind of sealer on latex-free. And latex-free bands are pretty good, by the way. That's it. There you go. So you got it all tied off. See it's stretched out. Boom, boom. Now what I do is I take the wing. This is the wing, incidentally. There's a little piece over here that hangs out. I take that and I just like that. Smooth it out, make it nice so it comes, curves right into that cup there. And she's ready to go. Just like that. But like I said, uh, and this jig, you can you can have you can you can make all kinds of jigs. You don't even need a jig. You don't even need a jig. You're not cutting. You know, you can get your wife or your wife to hold it like that. Your wife can hold it, then you can tie it, or your friend can hold it, tie it like that. Or you can get, you can push it down on one like this, and hold it, that hold it like that, and tie it. I mean, there's a thousand different ways to do it, but this is to give you an idea the best way to cut it. I, uh, like I said, this is this is my baby. This is this is this is the one, man. And uh, if you don't have that, then definitely go to this rotary cutter, because uh, especially with the self-sealing mat. I think that should cover, you know, covered this, covered that, different ways of cutting, tying. I think that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching and everything else. If I missed anything, let me know. And uh, it was fun. First video we did in a long time. Let's see how rusty I am. <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye-bye.